Hello, happy Friday. And what a week we have had in school. What an eco week. It's been absolutely brilliant. I have been so delighted to see all the different things that you've been doing. Learning about biodiversity, doing art and models with recycled materials, going out litter picking, planting different plants and uh, and looking after different parts of the school, but also thinking about the impact on the environment of what we're currently doing to the environment and how you as young people can really help us to improve that. And we've had kind of our own Greta Thunberg in school this week, and I'm going to talk to you about Greta Thunberg in a minute. We've had our own Greta Thunberg, and that's Miss McManus. She's a little bit older than Greta, but not much. Um, but she's been really leading us this week and making us think about all these really, really important issues. And she's been absolutely brilliant working so hard. So after three, right across the school, can we give Miss McManus a big clap? I didn't do it after three, did I? Oh well, we gave her a big clap, that was nice. So I've been thinking about um, looking at what kind of superpowers eco-warriors need, because you're all eco-warriors now. You're out there looking after the environment, looking, thinking about your future, thinking about the world as you grow older. And these are some of the things you might need. You might need to be creative. You might need to think of good ideas to solve problems. Resilient. That means you keep going with the things that you do. Patient. Sometimes you might need to be patient because sometimes people might not think that what we're doing, what you're doing as young people is really important, but it is really important. And here's Greta. I guess you all know Greta, don't you? But I wonder if you know Greta's story because Greta has a really interesting story. She was born on January the 3rd in 2003 in a place called Stockholm, which is the capital of Sweden. If you don't know where Sweden is, get to look it up on a map. It's a really good place. Now, here's something I didn't know. She is a descendant, which means, you, so if you're a descendant, that means like your grandparents or your great grandparents. So Greta's great grandfather was a man called Zvanti Agnus. That's quite difficult to say. Um, and he was a scientist, and he came up with the idea of the greenhouse effect. Now, if you don't know what the greenhouse effect is, again, look it up. But basically, what that means is, you know, you hear, hear about the world heating up, getting hotter. Well, one of the reasons it's getting hotter is all the gases we use, and all the fuels and things like that we use. And um, so he came up with this idea that the more you burn things like coal to keep warm which not many people do now, but lots and lots of people used to do, and some countries still use it a lot. Um, it makes everything warmer, and that has a bad effect on the environment, and that's called the greenhouse effect, and Greta's ancestor came up with that. I knew this, but it's really interesting. Greta um, has got Asperger's syndrome, um, which is a kind of autism, and she thinks that she describes that, and so she should, as a gift. And, it believe, and she gives her kind of a superpower, having that Asperger's syndrome. For years, Greta asked her parents to make changes to their own life, to make sure that they were reducing their carbon footprint. And I know you've been learning about that this week. And in the end, she was so determined that her mum gave up flying and her dad became a vegan. And Greta thought that was much better. But she didn't think that was good enough, Greta. She wanted to really save our planet. That's what she's focused on, really trying to help save our planet. And that's what you're all doing this week. You're thinking about it from the school, but you're also thinking about the whole world. And Greta started um, this thing, which was a protest on a Friday, so that students and pupils across the world could think about environmental issues on a Friday. Some of them stopped going to school, but I'm not recommending that. Um, and she started this movement called Fridays for the Future. Um, 
and she has had such an impact. In fact, she was asked to go and speak at something called the United Nations, which is a really important thing in New York. And she lives in Sweden, which is over the other side of the Atlantic. And Greta didn't want to fly there. So she went on a boat, on quite a small boat, and sailed across the Atlantic to get there. Because going on a boat's less damaging to the environment than flying. In fact, it's got very little damage at all because it's all powered by the wind. Um, and it took her two weeks to get to New York to make this speech that she made at the United Nations. So Greta is an incredible person. You've all been a bit Greta this week, and we all need to carry on being a bit Greta. Um, she's, you might have heard of something that's going on this, at the moment in this country called COP26, which is a big conference in a place called Glasgow in Scotland. And Greta is there. She's not been asked to speak, which is terrible, I think. But she is there kind of protesting and making sure that people hear her voice. But she comes back to her Asperger's. She says, it makes me see things from outside the box. I don't fall for lies. I can see through things. If I would have been like everyone else, I wouldn't have started all of these protests. And Greta really is an incredible person. And you are all fantastic people as well. And I am so proud of our school and Miss McManus for leading us this week to do some really important things. And I hope, I really hope, it just doesn't stop at this week, that we carry on doing these things. And you as young people, keep challenging us older people. Why have you put that light on? Are you turning your computer off overnight? Why are you using that plastic bottle? Is it recyclable? and other lots of questions that you should be asking us because the planet is your planet and you will grow up and it's really important that the planet is a safe, healthy place when you grow up to be even as old as me. Okay, so thank you for the listening about Greta. Now, I had to, no one's, you've been so busy being environmentalist this week, no one sent me any jokes. So I've had to think of my own and we'll come to those in a minute. Okay, house points. We put two lots of weeks together. Fire were in fourth place. Sorry, 2014, but penguins were the winning class. Earth, you came second. Really, Earth should have come first this week, shouldn't they? But anyway, they didn't come second. Sorry, they came third. 2,235, and Puffin was the winning class. Um, Air, your second. 2,329 and cormorants, the winning class. And yes, well, in a way appropriate that water, yet again, have won with 2,398 and flamingos are the winning class. So I've come up with a couple of jokes of my own. Well, I haven't come up with them by myself. Remember, Miss Woodward gave me this lovely joke book, which, I, which helps me out. Right, here's the first one. I don't know what you'll think of these. What do you do when a dinosaur sneezes? Any idea? Get out of the way, of course. <laughs> you wouldn't want to be in the way of a dinosaur sneeze, would you? Um, why did the orange stop rolling down the hill? Any idea? It ran out of juice. Ha ha ha. Very funny. What do you get when you cross a river with a stream? Wet. And lastly, these aren't as good as your jokes, are they? Mm, some of them aren't. Uh, how can you swim a mile in just a few seconds? Go over a waterfall. Uh, of course, don't try that at home. So, well done you eco-warriors. So proud of you this week. Have a good Friday and I look forward to seeing you in school later. Bye.